Three years ago, I was teaching an entrepreneurial class in an inner city Baltimore city school. And the class uh, is called NIFTY. It's a fantastic program, National Federation for Teaching Entrepreneurship. And the purpose of the class is they take a successful entrepreneur, which in that case was me, and they put me in a class. And the goal of the class is to help students create and inspire them to create a business idea, create a marketing plan, a sales plan, a balance sheet, a profit and loss statement, and then eventually, after they get through their whole journey, they stand in front of a CEO of a major company like Leg Mason, T. Rowe Price, and other ones with a suit on and present their whole business idea. So when I kicked off the first class, I started out with a question that I was asked when I was in high school, and that question was, what do you want to be when you grow up? So there was 30 students in the class, and about 20 of them said, I'm not sure, or I don't know. Eight or nine of them said lawyer or football player or athlete. But one student who was a junior at the time came forward and said, Mr. Garretts, you know, thank you for being here, but how can I answer what I want to be when I grow up when I don't know what my options are? I don't even know how to answer the question. I'm learning all these amazing things in school, but how do I relate what I'm learning to actually what I want to be when I grow up? So in the, in the late 70s, when I was in high school, I was one of those kids that said, I don't know. And it occurred to me that maybe the better question is this. So when I came to the next class, I asked them, I said, if you could change the world, what would you invent or what would you do? And all 30 hands went up. I'd cure Alzheimer's, I'd invent a new iPhone, I'd create a website, I'd create a new medical device, I would build a cool green wall. And the lesson from that was that once you tap someone's inner passion of what they care about, um, helping them achieve what they want to be when they grow up is a lot easier. So after I went through that process, I manually took each goal of those students and then drew out the hard skills and soft skills that they would need to acquire over the next few years to actually achieve that. So if you think about it, take a walk, the next time you walk down the street in your hometown, so in Baltimore where I live, um, I, um, I saw this, if you look at the, the picture up here, I was walking down and there's a, a green wall and uh, this is the wall in the PNC building. This is a living organic wall. This is actually plants living vertically and the person, and I said to myself, who's the person that designed that? Who was the person that lived a journey and came up with the idea and worked with a team of people to develop the living wall? And the interesting thing about this living wall is that every single one of those plants has a little sensor in it that figures out how much moisture and, and heat it needs. They're different plants. The whole design is a really, really interesting journey of the person who did that. Uh, how many of you have an iPhone, the new one, that has the biometric sensor on the phone? So this is a really cool journey that somebody took where you put your thumb now, instead of when you're driving down the road and putting in your passcode, it'll, it'll then take your thumbprint, log you into your iPhone. But what I hear is going to happen in the next year when you walk into Starbucks and actually authenticate on your iPhone you'll actually pay for your coffee on your iPhone and your iPhone will become your credit card. So that is a very, very smart group of people in cybersecurity and e-commerce and so on that did that. Or if you watch a Netflix movie and you notice that after you watch the movie, it says, um, hey, here are some movies that you should meet. There's a data scientist behind there that has to have a lot of skills about understanding human emotion and, whom, and, and what people want to see. But the journey of the data scientist, which is one of the most explosive jobs coming up in, in America and around the world, is really neat. The thing that's really important here is that each of these people lived a journey. They lived a journey in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. 
It's actually science, technology, engineering, arts, and math because it, it, the convergence of arts and engineering disciplines is where these journeys converge. And the interesting thing about STEAM is that, um, and, and STEM, is STEM is not a degree. STEM is an innate capability that sits inside of every single one of us. And how you unleash that capability is tapping your passion and how you relate what you care about uh, to the world and what you're going to do is, is really what the key is. Now, all of us have seen this, the Maslow hierarchy needs. It's one of my most favorite graphs. If you talk to my 13-year-old son and my 15-year-old daughter, I actually have this poster up for their room. Understanding human motivation is the most important thing that a student needs because after you get through the basic physiological needs like food and water and safety, you begin to go up to the top three layers of building confidence and self-esteem. And then eventually, like the people that designed the green wall and the people that designed the biometric sensor and the people that do the Netflix science, data scientist work, all of them have got to the point in their life where they truly feel like they can make a difference in this world. And every single person should feel like they, they can make a difference in the world. Now, one of the things that is interesting is in order to do this, you have to develop skills. And you have to develop hard skills and soft skills. So we do a really good job, and schools do a really good job, of teaching math and science and so on. And one of the other skills is, that is really prevalent now today is technology skills. There, it is no longer good enough to, to be able to use Word and PowerPoint the person that used and designed that, that living wall used AutoCAD, used the 2D design. So what we figured out was if we could take the three people that I mentioned earlier um, times the thousands and thousands and thousands of other people that have done amazing things and chart their journeys and then allow students to live their journeys, that would be a very, very powerful way to allow people to navigate what they want to be. So the quote by Maslow, if you deliberately plan on being less than you are capable of being, I warn you that you'll be unhappy for the rest of your life. It's a really powerful statement. But this has to happen, to tap someone's passion has to happen very early in life, as far back as middle school. So back to skills, which is really the key point. As, as Dion talked about, he, he gained two skills. In high school, he took a certification in A+, a Network Plus certification. He is now on a journey to become a forensic analyst. He'll be the future guy that, that goes after the hacker that hacked into Target. But with the other skill that is, that is probably one of the most important ones, when you interview all of those people, you'll find this, is that their skills are part hard skills, but also part soft skills. Conflict management, collaboration, grit, resilience. But I don't ever remember my daughter coming home from school and say, hey, Dad, I got a B in conflict management, or I got a C in collaboration. When you interview all the leaders, all these STEM leaders, you'll find that they share one thing in common. They said it was a really heavy, hard skill path, and then they turned into mostly into soft skills as they rose through their career. So when I was 15 years old, I worked at McDonald's, and we had a big bus come in, and we were going crazy, you know, creating Big Macs and so on, and it was an hour and a half, really, really busy. And then when it was done, I was, I was resting against the wall, and my manager came up to me and said, Rick, if you have time to lean, you have time to clean. And I was like, and, I, and keep in mind, I was making two thirty-five an hour back then. At the point, but the, the lesson is, is I learned something called work ethic. And a lot of times, if you spell out every single thing that you do and you understand its purpose, that what you're doing at this point in time in your life is just a stepping stone to help you gain soft skills. That same day, a customer walked up to me and, and hit me in the chest with his bag and said, my filet of fish does not have cheese on it. And I learned conflict management skills very early on of how to deal with that. The soft skills and hard skills that you need to develop that point of your life is very, very important. 
So fundamentally, what we've done in the Life Journey Project, we've gone out to all the STEM and STEAM leaders of our country, the data scientists, the forensic analysts at CyberPoint, the uh, turbine designer, the, uh, the, the data scientists at, say, Lockheed Martin, the forensic analysts and cybersecurity people, and we've charted their journeys. And technology has now given us an ability for students to go in and live a day in the life of our leaders and live a day in the life of our STEM leaders. And you should be able to test drive your life extremely early on and be able to experience what it's like to do that job before you actually do it. And the other thing is, is that for the first time, we as a nation now and we as a world can have corporate America stand behind our principals, our teachers, and our educators and actually relate everything that's taught in school to the actual job that is, that is performed. Once a student picks a journey, they actually pick the, pick the actual beating heart person that's in their community or in their state. And they understand step by step, just like Dion is doing, what they need to be that person. So when that question is asked back in high school again, what do you want to be when you grow up? You'll see people starting to answer the question, I know what I want to be when I grow up. I know how to get there, and I know a step-by-step -step process of how we're going to do that. So what we figured out is the biggest, most powerful asset that our country and countries around the world have is that the journey that all of you led and the success that you have is the most powerful teaching instrument to the up-and-coming generation. We have over 40 million students from sixth grade through college, and your journey is their future. Thank you. Thank you.